The word of God is serious. Can you say amen? You don't play with it. You don't mock it. You don't reject it. You don't manipulate it. You obey it. Welcome to the program warning. This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen, president of World Ministries International. Today I'm doing one more program with attorney Stephen Pigeon. As you know, if you've been watching this warning television program, attorney Pigeon has been my guest in the past many times as we've discussed several areas concerning the president of the United States. The very last program, we discussed the continual felony crimes of the president of the United States. And today we want to discuss this latest certificate of live birth. The last program I did with attorney Pigeon, uh, this certificate of live birth had not come on yet. But now it's been uh, introduced to the world and supposedly this is supposed to prove that he is legitimately the president of the United States. Let me just read you some headline news. It says, Dr. Ron Polin evaluates Obama's birth certificate. April 28, 2011. It says, on April 27, 2011, the Post and Email contacted Dr. Ron Polin, whose work we have cited here before, about the certificate of live birth released by the White House online. Last July, we published a full-length interview with which Dr. Polin detailed why he was positive that the certificate of live birth posted online by factcheck.org in 2008 and pictured at right was a forgery. And I'm going to page two. It says, quote, the morons forgot to flatten the layers. You should see what this looks like in Photoshop or another Adobe program that reads PDFs and works with layers. Now, as I skim through these articles that I'm, I'm going to introduce to you now, you can look at them all on my website, www.worldministries.org. On the bottom half of my website, front page, we have a running newspaper. Click on political, and you can read all of these articles in their entirety. It says, a year ago, I proved to the world via YouTube that Obama's Kolb scan is a fake a composite image fabricated by dozens of individual image layers from within Photoshop. This time out, whoever made this piece of junk forgot to flatten the layers. Now it goes on. Now my book will have yet another update after Donald Trump came along and flushed out all of the rats behind the conspiracy to forge it. I already went on record as saying that Xiaomi Fukino lied through her teeth about Obama, Obama bombshell, a.k.a. Blue Hawaii, but I had no idea just how much and how far she would go on lying until she gave an interview with MSNBC reporter. This forgery is a sick joke. I have no doubt that Obama freaks will hail it as being real. For year, three years, this forged one-sided image has been passed off as a digital scan of Obama's birth certificate. And it goes on, but he says, let me repeat that the digital scan of Obama's birth certificate that was posted on the Obama campaign website was not made by the Obama campaign. In fact, the campaign never said they made it. So they have plausible deniability on it. But he says, without looking at the White House released, I know it's a forgery right off the bat and signature is forged. And it goes on and on. Again, read this in its entirety, please, on my website, www.worldministries.org. Another one, WorldNet Daily, Tuesday, May 3, 2011. Online birth certificate document was changed. A computer document expert who analyzed the online image of Barack Obama's purported certificate of live birth for WND confirmed there were anomalies inconsistent with simple scanning process, and there is evidence it has been manipulated but there's no way to determine exactly what has been modified. It goes on to say, and the White House last week trumpeted the release of the above document calling it proof positive Obama born in Hawaii, as if that would answer all the questions about his presidential eligibility. In fact, those who contend the founders of the country excluded dual citizens from qualifying as natural-born 
citizen, as the Constitution requires presidents to be, say the document actually proves Obama's ineligibility. It certifies that Barack Obama Sr. was listed as a father, but he was never a U.S. citizen. You know, this is quite something. Here they want to say it's real, but it actually proves he's not qualified. If uh, it says he was actually born in Africa in Kenya, and it admits it, it's all over for Obama if we want to abide by the Constitution. Graphic pros challenge Obama's birth certificate Friday, April 29, 2011. And uh, again, you can read this in its entirety. I don't want to read it right now because I want to get to uh, attorney Stephen Pigeon. But Terry Lachlan Action Fund. Uh, again, look at my website if you want to read this in its entirety. It's a 15-page article. And another one. World Net Daily, Tuesday, May 17, 2011. Nordyke numbers expose Obama document fraud. Let me just read you two paragraphs. It says, New York newly unearthed information about Hawaii's procedure for numbering birth records at the time o Barack Obama was born casts further doubt on the authenticity of the short form and long form birth certificates pushed online with the president's authority. Details about the registration procedure are significant because some analysts have wondered how Obama could have issued a registration number that is higher than the number of the published birth certificates of Susan and Gretchen Nordyke, which were registered three days later than the president's. Well, that is a good question, isn't it? Mr. President, you have a lot to answer, I believe. A lot of questions. I know it's taken you several years now and, and a couple million dollars so far to produce something that seems to be a forgery, so I'm not sure if we can get a straight answer out of you. Uh, once again, I have attorney Stephen Pigeon with me today. He's authored the book, uh, The Obama Error. He's authored the book, Behold a White Horse, as well as Behold a Pale Green Horse. Once again, The Obama Error, Behold a White Horse, and Behold a Pale Green Horse. And I would encourage you to telephone my office, 360-629-5248, and get your very own copies. But I want to go to Attorney Stephen Pigeon right now because Attorney Pigeon has been involved in this uh, situation for a long time as far as trying to get the president to uh, verify whether he's constitutionally eligible to be president of the United States. That seems like a straightforward request. I mean, uh, if you want to get married, you've got to produce your birth certificate. If you want to be a police officer, you've got to produce your birth certificate. Uh, what about president of the United States? Attorney Pigeon, welcome back to the program warning. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. It's a pleasure to be here. You heard some of the articles I read to you. In fact, I'm going to give them to you. And, uh, Counselor, I want you now to uh, tell us, after examining uh, what he has purported to be true, and, and I know uh, right before we went on this program, you pointed out things that were obvious, if you know the law. Uh, why should we be questioning right now the President of the United States that he needs to answer what appears to be uh, deception once again to the people of the United States? Well, what he has produced is not a uh, birth certificate. Let's begin there. He has not produced a birth certificate. As a matter of law and as a force of law, he's produced one thing and one thing only an admission against interest. Okay. For the first time, we have him declaring, personally, uh, from the White House, my father was not an American citizen. Now, we had speculated for a long time, uh, my friends and I that have been involved in this particular issue, the natural born citizen issue, not the birther issue. We've been speculating for a long time how long it would be before he produced a forged birth certificate. And he has the opportunity, he's had four years since he produced the Forge certification of live birth. He's had four years to pre prepare such a document and all the resources in the world to produce whatever he wanted to. He could produce an immaculate forgery or he could produce this thing, which is not an immaculate forgery. But he could have produced anything. He could have declared his father to be someone else than Barack Hussein Obama, who could have been an American citizen and, and resolved the issue. 
And it may have defamed him or may have clouded the issue about what his real name was or how he obtained that name. Uh, but nonetheless, he could have clarified the issue and at least put the NBC issue, the National Born, Natural Born Citizen issue, to rest. He didn't do that. Instead, he came out with a document. He said, this is my birth certificate. That's an admission against interest. The admission is my father was not an American citizen, disqualified under Article 2, Section 1. His father was a British subject at the time of his birth. Now, I always like to look at these documents that he produces to really, you know, kind of see the forest for the trees, if you will. Yes, yes. Uh, for instance, if I, if I was working at the, at the local convenience store, and Barack Obama came in and said, you know, I'd like to buy uh, a six-pack of beer. And I said, well, let's see some identification. And he produced his Kolb, the cert Certificate of Live Birth, the Certification of Live Birth that was produced on his own website. And this, by the way, this is where I take issue with, with Dr. Ron Poland, who said, well, uh, you know, he's got de a credible deniability because his campaign never produced this particular Kolb. That's not true. His Fight the Smears website, which was paid with campaign money, did in fact produce the fraudulent Kolb. That does relate to him under a doctrine of respondeat superior to the extent that there were crimes committed with that document, and there were crimes committed with that document, mispersonation, because it, it, it evidenced the seal of Hawaii. It had an indicia of Hawaiian authority on the forgery. Okay. And it claimed to be a birth certificate. Those are the two elements that qualify for the felony of mispersonation under federal statutes, and it can expose a person to 15 years in prison. My goodness. Now, that particular document is the one that Bill O'Reilly has held up, Chris Matthews has held up. Now, they didn't, they didn't hold up the document because Obama never produced a document. He produced an image on the Internet. He never produced a document. Okay? Now, let me give you an idea. Let's take this same person goes into the 7-Eleven. He says, I want to buy a six-pack of beer. Well, I need to see some identification. Well, here is my laptop, and here's a picture of my driver's license. Here's my iPhone. Can you see my driver's license here? That's what Obama produced. Wow. He produced an electronic image. He never, ever, did he ever produce a written document. Now, by the way, there were claims that he produced this long-form birth certificate in writing. Never did that either. People are asking for it. Supposedly, NBC was given a copy of this long-form birth certificate. No one can find it. No one will produce it. No one has seen it. What we have, again, is an image. We have an Internet image that's been produced. No document. My goodness. Okay. So, but the certificate of live birth had a problem. It had the certificate number blotted out. Now, I took one look at that document and said, well, here's your problem. Your certificate number is blotted out, and it says any alterations invalidate this certificate. Now, if I, again, I'm the clerk at the lowly convenience store. I'm looking for some ID to establish you're over 21 so you can buy a six-pack of beer. You hand me this thing. Of course, you didn't hand it to me. You're showing me this on your iPhone. Here's my certificate of live birth. Well, your certificate number is blotted out. Have you got a driver's license? Sure, here's my driver's license, but my license number is blotted out. Can you accept that as ID? No. No, absolutely not. This is prima facie invalid on its face. Absolutely no good does not qualify as anything except an invalid piece of art. Now, we have similar problems with this long-form certificate of live birth. There's no indicia of an official Hawaiian state seal. It's not on there. If you look at other birth certificates that are contemporaneous with the time, such as the Nordic twin uh, birth certificates, yes, yes. they have a big, fat state of Hawaii crinkle. You know, the big round seals that you push into the bottom? Yes, yes. Very clearly seen from the microfish. You can see it crunch right through there. And federal law requires that crunch to come up through the paper this way. In other words, when you have the seal, you have your little seal marker here. It's got bumps this way. You put the paper on top, you squeeze, and it causes the bumps to come up through the page. That way, when you go to pencil over it or photocopy it, you can get what's on the seal. You sure, can see what's sure, there. Sure, sure. Okay. The seal that was on the Second Kolb, produced by Obama on the factcheck.org, a partisan website that Obama and Bill Ayers used to fund directly, that website produced another certificate of live birth that had the certificate number on it. They never gave us a clear image of it, and it was never produced in paper format. We had an angled picture from this way, an angled picture from this way, a close-up of this portion and a close-up of that portion. The state seal that's on that document 
does not say state of Hawaii. It goes mumbo, mumbo, mumbo. There's nothing on there. It's mumbo jumbo. And the seal is in reverse. It pushes through the paper and goes out the other way. My goodness. Okay. We don't have that on, on this so-called long-form certificate of live birth. There's no seal, period, none. We have nothing. Okay. It, did, did he do that intentionally so we couldn't charge him with another felony crime? That's exactly right. There is no bona fide indicia of the state of Hawaii on this seal. The one thing that might qualify as an indicia of the state of Hawaii is the, Al, uh, the Alvin T. Onaka Ph.D. signature at the bottom. That appears to be a standard form stamp. Poomph. Oh, here, we've got, you know, you have, the, you have the clerk working in the office. Give him a copy of the certificate of live birth. Okay, great. Okay, make sure that you stamp it as a certificate given today. You pull out the Alvin T. Onaka PhD seal, chunk, right? Then you pull out your date stamp, kunk, and then you put that in the envelope, you send it out. My goodness. Right? But this is, we've got a problem because the state seal here yeah. that appears on everybody else's copy of certificate of live birth that had been given around the same period has this exact same language. I certify that this is a true copy or an abstract, right? Yes. Of, of the record on file. Except that the, in this particular case, in this block, is spelled T-X-E. <laughs> well, looks like somebody forgot. Was, there's one of two possibilities. Yes. One, you had somebody who got sloppy with the, with, and left a typo in there in the forgery. Or two, somebody did it intentionally to make sure that they could make the argument, well, that was never, that was supposed to be an artist rendering of the state seal. It's not a bona fide state seal, which you could tell right from looking at it because nobody would put an X in the middle of the. That's right. So as a consequence, this document has no indicia of the state of Hawaii on it. None. Okay. If it's got no indicia of the state of Hawaii, it's not a birth certificate. That's right. It's not even a rendering of a birth certificate. It's not an abstract of a birth certificate. It's a piece of art and nothing more, okay? Yes, exactly. This is some artwork. Oh, let's call this a certificate of live birth. When, and while we're at it, let's, put, let's do, put some other doctored stuff in here. Now, there's some very interesting information in here. Now, Ron Pollan said, well, the, the signature of Stanley Ann Dunham Obama, Obama is a forgery. I agree with that conclusion. Here's why. Number one, let's just take a look at some of the anomalies in here. There's three glaring anomalies on the face of this long-form birth certificate. The Russians picked them out within the hour. If yes. you recall, John, when you and I last met, I said it would take 48 hours before they determined it was a forgery. Yes. It was one hour. The Russians said, well, that's clearly a forgery. In fact, Russia, Brazil, India, China, they had all diagnosed it as a forgery within the hour. Why? Three, three anomalies. Number one, Barack Hussein Obama is senior father, sets out his birthplace as Kenya, East Africa. Well, yeah. 1961, that was the British protectorate of East Africa. It was not Kenya. Right. Okay. Kenya had their independence in 1963. 1963. So you don't have Kenya before in 1961. You have the British protectorate of East Africa. Okay. His nationality was British and not a citizen of Britain or a citizen of the Commonwealth, but a British subject. But that's an important point because it goes to whether or not a natural-born citizen can, can hold the office of the United States or a non-natural-born citizen. Particularly, British subjects are banned by the Jay Treaty that followed the War of 1812 because right. they were British subjects, not, not citizens of America. Okay. okay, anomaly number one, no Kenya in 1961. Num no, anomaly number two, place of birth. Okay, now this is the birth certificate. He's claiming, oh yeah, this is a true copy of the certificate of live birth. Right. Why is it a true copy? Well, it's got the original signature here of, of Anna, Anna Dunham. And it's got the original signature here of the, of the witnesses. And it's got the original dates over here. So this is an, a, a true copy of the original, right? It says hospital, Capilani Maternity and Gynecological Hospital. Interesting. Didn't acquire that name until 1978. <laughs> So not only do we have, we, so we've got, that's our second element of prophecy, if you will, on this birth certificate. Yes, yes. Well, I'm, I'm prophesying that at some time in the future, the Capilani Maternity Ward is going to be called the Capilani Maternity and Gynecological Ho Hospital because I know the merger is going to take place sometime, you know, 15 years from now. Okay, the third anomaly is the race of the father, African. Ridiculous. Now, here's why it's ridiculous. You could say, well, some people said African back then doesn't make any difference what people said or the practice was. Federal law 
The federal statute requires the race to be identified in one of five categories. The category that would have been most applicable in this case for the race of the father was Negro. If you were using the international status, it would be black. But at no time would it be African. You and I were both in elementary school at that time, 1961, and they used Negro. Sure they did. Negro. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you know, it, it just amazes me, Steve, why these are glaring errors, glaring uh, contradictions that, that somebody should pick up right away. And I, I picked it up again within the first hour. I, I met with some of our people and, and said the same thing we're going over, mm -hmm. African, Kenyan, da-da-da-da. Mm -hmm. And uh, how in the world can the, the news media, no reputable news media is tearing this thing apart yet? Well, I think you said the operative word, reputable news media. There is no nationally recognized media, that is to say somebody who is nationally distributed out of New York, that is reputable. 25 years ago, anything uh, that, that insinuated even a moral uh, uh, deficiency on your character would have got you thrown out of office if you're cheating on your wife or anything like this, especially something that's outright uh, fraud, mm -hmm. a forgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but yet, people can continue, continue to put out things like this that are just outrageous, and nobody's holding this man accountable. That's correct. Now, let me throw one. There's one other piece of information I want to point on the face of the document, okay, that a lot of people won't know if they haven't studied the issue. Ann Dunham, Stanley Ann Dunham. Yes. Okay, she attended two colleges uh, before, to get her bachelor's degree. She started at the University of Hawaii, went there for one semester, okay, Barack Obama in Dreams of My Father says, and then they lived happily ever after in the islands until dad left for Harvard. That's absolute nonsense. She left the island and was gone in order so that she could start school at the University of Washington in August of 1961. Okay, so we're talking just a couple of weeks after the so-called date of birth, yes, which yes. I don't believe is the date of birth, by the way. And after a couple of weeks following the date of birth, she starts at the University of Washington and she matriculates. That is to say, she's in consistent enrollment as a full-time student, fall of 61, spring of 62, fall of 62, and she doesn't return to Hawaii until the spring of 63, after she was certain that Barack Hussein Obama was gone my, my. and had left for Harvard, okay? She never lived with this man. She never lived with this man. And and more importantly, her registration records that have come from the University of Hawaii and the registration records that have come from the University of Washington. So you're talking registration now in the period 61, 62, yes. and 63. Yes. All list her as Stanley Ann Dunham. Okay. There's no reference. She didn't hold herself out at UW as Stanley Ann Dunham Obama. That's right. Okay. She signed up as Stanley Ann Dunham in every instance. Yes, yes. Now, it tells you that maybe there wasn't any such thing as a marriage. That maybe what happened was Barack Hussein Obama said, sign me up as dad, and maybe he did that for a payoff. Well, possibility. Okay, well, let's just say that that happened. The, I have personally seen the divorce records because I personally have them in my possession of the file, the divorce file between Stanley and Obama and Barack Hussein Obama. It wasn't done in a superior court. It was done by a magistrate. Wow. And it was done by a magistrate quietly, and it was done by the stipulation of the father who was in Massachusetts at the time. So he signed off. He never appeared. He just signed off. There was no child support involved. Oh, sure, I'll sign that. Boom. Accepted service, yada, yada, yada. Somebody stamps it and says, boom, you're divorced. You have two minutes, counselor, for closing arguments. The closing argument is the long-form certificate of live birth is not a long-form certificate of live birth, period. It's not. It's not a state-issued document. It has no indicia of state certification. It's totally falsified, completely forged, on its face contradictory. 
we haven't talked about the flattening, the, all the multiple layers on it, that the kerning within the letters that indicate it was done by a computer, not a typewriter. My, my. The fact that where there is a curve in, on the left-hand edge of the birth certificate, the form shows the curve, but the lettering that has Barack Hussein Obama and Kapiolani and so on does not show the curve. There's plenty of indicia that indicates this thing was created. Not to mention, oh, uh, there's one other thing, too. This birth certificate number talking about the Nordyke twins, totally inconsistent with the numbering system. The inconsistency of the number is actually alleged to be consistent with the young girl who was born and died the following day, born on August 4th, died on the 5th. One minute. Her name was uh, Virginia uh, Semiyara, Semiyara, anyway, buried up in Punch Bowl, and her body was later moved. But the fact is, they believe that this particular birth certificate number, 611061, uh, was actually belonged to a child who was born and died the same day. Born on the 4th, died on the 5th. My goodness. And that that's where he picked up this number. So this is bogus. It's useless. This long-form birth certificate is useless. It's worthless. The only thing you can use it for is that Barack Obama is willing to claim that his father was Kenyan. 30 seconds. That's it. He's not a natural-born citizen of the United States, and this is another level of high-end fraud. Why isn't Trump screaming? Well, Mr. Trump, uh, you know, donated $250,000 to the election of Rahm Emanuel for Chicago as mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, something outrageous is going on. Uh, trying to come across to the people of the United States, uh, what is the problem here? What's the problem with the president of the United States? What's, what's the problem even with Donald Trump? Tune in again. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth or people with something to hide. The word of God is serious. Can you say amen? You don't play with it. You don't mock it. You don't reject it. You don't manipulate it. You obey it. Do you enjoy my warning television program? If you do, I need your help. Judgment is escalating. The cup of iniquity is becoming full for the United States of America. The science of judgment is sweeping the world. Every nation is being judged. The New World Order, Islam and a 12th Imam, the Mahdi, World War III, the Mark of the Beast, the Plagues of God, over two billion people dying, Armageddon and the return of Jesus Christ. Please, won't you help me sound the alarm? Partner with me. Even a one-time gift would help. Telephone now, 360-629-5248. That's 360-629-5248. 360-629-5248. Thank you and shalom.